What is the scariest, creepiest thing that happened to you as a kid or teen? Posted one day ago. I was eight years old at the time, and I was in bed at the stage of sleepiness where you can feel yourself drifting off or so I thought. I must have been dreaming because my entire body jerked as I felt the two hands off my papa who lived a good few hours away grab my ankles and drag me. I woke up almost halfway down my bed with my legs dangling off the edge. I couldn't shake the horrible grin he had on his face, so I went to wake my mom. She sat up with me and about an hour later, she got a call saying that he had passed away pretty much at the same time I woke up from that dream. Freaky. Scarier for me than my mom, I think. One day, when I was maybe four, she took the laundry out to hang it on the line in the backyard. Our house was surrounded by woods and we didn't have any fence around the yard. Since her hands were full, she left the back door open when she went out. I just remember sitting on the couch watching a cartoon and all of a sudden there was a huge brown dog in front of me. I think it was some kind of German Shepherd mix. Our couch was up against the wall, so I scrambled up on the back of the couch and just froze. It very easily could have just grabbed me and ended me, but it sat down and just looked at me instead. Needless to say, my mom came in from hanging laundry, poked her head into the living room just to check on me, and just about died when she saw this huge ass dog in there with her small child. I remember her using a weirdly calm voice to talk to it while she walked over to open our front door. The dog ran right out, and then she started crying, which really confused little me. She didn't ever leave doors open after that. In hindsight, I think it was just a cool, well-behaved dog that got away from a neighbor, but very scary at the time. On my way home from a friend's house, some dude at the bus stop started questioning me regarding personal details. My dumbass not wanting to be rude answered a few questions and told him what stop I get off at. He ended up sitting next to me in a pretty empty bus. I was pretty creeped out. So when the bus pulled up to a busy intersection, I quickly ran out and he yelled that this wasn't my stop. I ran into a busy coffee shop and called my dad to pick me up. I've posted this before, but a couple of years ago, I had a very detailed dream where I was in a new school in a small town in the mountains called Lacoma or something, but for some reason it felt off. The physical appearance of the outside of the building was like my old school and I can't remember the inside, but I remember going to leave school at sunset and the bus coming to school to bring us home already had kids in it. The kids got off but all looked wrinkled as if they were old but looked like a kid in every other way. The bus looked strange with about six feet of empty space behind the driver and the actual seats in the back left corner, which were just some holes. But the weird part is, on the bus ride home, the bus drove along a small road on the side of a small mountain inside of a valley, which will be important later. Eventually, I was at home, and I look outside to see a dark figure, so I run and try to scream, but I can't make noise. I make it upstairs into my brother's room to find my mom laying on his bed motionless. After about ten seconds of trying to wake her up, I back up, still terrified, into something cold. It was the figure that was following me. Then, I wake up terrified as usual whenever I have a bad dream, but this time was weird. For some reason, the name of the small village stuck with me. A few days later, I go on Google Earth and search up Lacoma, and three results popped up. So I clicked on one in northeastern Spain in the mountains, and I shit you not, it's the inside of the valley, up on the road where the bus went through. I got chills and wondered if I had never been of that place or heard of that place and if it had somehow made its way into my dream, but living in a small town, and the town in Spain being even smaller, I don't know how to explain it. TLDR. I had a dream about an extremely specific location, found the real place with the same name and details. Oh, I just remembered another thing. A couple of years ago, my family was visiting my other family in Puerto Rico and so we always stay at my grandma's house. Well, my dad and my mom went somewhere and me and my brother and my cousin stayed at my grandma's. We were all playing and then we hear the doorbell. We were going to answer, but it, then my grandma said to everyone to hide in the bedroom now. It was some weird creepy people dressed in all black with weird umbrellas and they apparently they had come before. To be honest, where my grandma lives is a bit of a dangerous side. We can't go outside at night and we can't go left of my grandma's house. She lives on the corner of a street because a bad man lives there. I don't remember the story of the bad man, but he either killed someone or did something else. Either way, he was in jail for a while. I had psychosis as a kid. I also had severe anxiety. I was scared of everything. At the same time, I was often delusional or paranoid or hallucinating. It just made everything worse. I don't know why this moment came to mind when I saw this post, 
but I guess it's the one I'm going with. In grade two, our classroom had a little bookshelf, and one of the books on it was a scary storybook. I actually found it again as an adult and read through it. It was completely ridiculous, and the stories were only a few sentences long each. Apparently, as an eight-year-old, it was the most terrifying thing ever. The one story that really, really got me was the one about a girl's head falling off. I pictured the image of this headless woman in my mind and it haunted me. Every night was agony as I lay in bed fearing that at any moment the headless girl would enter my room. I used to also call out to my mom at night often because I'd be scared. One night, I was alone in my room in the middle of the night when everyone else was sleeping and I should have been doing that as well. It was dark but not pitch black. I cried out to my mom to come in because I was scared. Remember the part earlier where I said I had hallucinations? Sometimes, when I called my mom, my dad would come instead. On this particular night, when I called out to my mom, my dad came into my room. He was completely headless. I yelled out in fear and covered my eyes with my blankets, only being brave enough to peek out again when I heard my dad's voice. When I looked back, both of my parents were standing there, heads attached. The relief I felt was immense, but I made my dad sleep next to me for the rest of the night. When I was 13, I was out hunting with my father for a nice whitetail. When he was on the trail, we saw plenty of blood and tracks and an empty cartridge. We ended up following the trail to find a dead man in the middle of the trail with a deer antler stuck in his stomach. As a young lad, I was terrified, trying to see if the clearly dead man was alive. We just tried to help a friendly hunter on his trail to end up finding a horribly fucked up corpse. I was in third grade watching Veggie Tales with my little sister in our parents' room. Suddenly everything starts shaking and the walls start cracking. Our parents run in and grab and shield us. Shortly after my parents packed bags for us and rushed us out of the house. We had no idea what was going on as we had just moved to Hawaii and hadn't ever been in an earthquake. But this was the six point something earthquake on the big island in 06. As a little kid, I thought the world was ending and swallowing us whole. The jeep-sized rocks we had to swerve while driving away during the tsunami evacuation that followed definitely reinforced that idea. When I was about seven, my friend and our families went to Cabo San Lucas. One night, around ten, my friend and I were in his hotel room and we thought we heard someone talking or chatting outside, so naturally we opened the door thinking it was our mom's but no one was outside. So, we looked down the hall both ways, right then left, and didn't see anyone so we look at each other in confusion, and as we were about to dismiss it, we turned to the right to go back inside. We saw a tall lady with black hair in a white dress at the end of the hall facing away from us, and as soon as we saw her, she turned around quick and started coming toward us fast. But when she moved, her dress didn't move, and it was almost as if she was floating. Her hair was in her face, but as she moved, it didn't move either. So we ran back inside and locked all the doors and hid behind the bed in the back corner of the hotel room. Nothing happened after that, and it was pretty quiet for the next five minutes. So eventually we got up and went to the door to look through the peephole and didn't see anyone. Then we opened the door and peeked our heads out to check again, and no one was there. So we went back inside, locked all the doors, and called our parents. Later, we learned about Yailona, and we realized it was her, and we had seen. When I was 12, I was staying overnight at my friend's house, and we were up all night playing Super Nintendo. It was storming, and I happened to glance out his window and saw a guy standing on the sidewalk across the street, dressed what looked to be a trench coat and hat. I couldn't see his face, but it seemed he was staring at the house. I called my friend over and he saw him as well, but when we looked away and back again, the dude was gone. This was on a military base, mind you. My friend figured it had something to do with my dad's job, but he didn't go into details. But why would some guy be standing in a torrential storm at four in the morning because of his dad's job? My friends and I have always been into spooky stuff. As teens, we would go ghost hunting and explore abandoned places. One night, we were out cruising around and drove into a cemetery that opened up toward the back end which housed tons of mausoleums. My friend and I were in the back of the car and couldn't really hear the conversation going on up front due to the radio, so we shouted for them to turn it down. The radio wasn't on. When I was around 10, my friends and I did our own version of witchcraft like spells and Ouija board and hung out in the cemetery. I used to talk to a dead girl, but I was probably being imaginative. I don't have any clear memories of that as if it was real, but anyways, I would have super scary dreams with like the same kind of demon trying to kill me or possess me pretty much daily for a period of time. They really freaked me out, 
and often I would have the same dream multiple times. One night, I woke up to the sound of my computer's keyboard keys being typed on. I was terrified and made sure I was awake by pinching my cheeks. No one was there and it was the middle of the night. Another time, I was showering and when I went to grab some soap, I saw out of the corner of my eyes a boy's face peeking in around the curtain. When I whipped the curtain back, no one was there. I still frequently have nightmares and they always involved some kind of supernatural element that's trying to hurt me. But the dreams I had as a kid were unique to themselves and I haven't had any like those since. Also, a few years ago, I was sitting in the living room at night watching TV when I saw in the dark window a face looking at me from outside. I screamed and jumped up because I thought it was my brother trying to fuck with me because it looked like him. I opened the front door and went out to yell at him, but no one was there. I called him and he said he was at his house, which I knew was true due to background noise. The weird thing was that both those times it looked like me because even though one was a kid and the other was a man's face. And no, my brother isn't a weirdo stalker and he doesn't have the motivation or incentive to mess with me like that. When I was 13, I lived in the Midwestern Southern region of the United States in Tornado Alley. There was one day in May where the weather had been getting worse as the day went on, but no one really thought anything of it since it happened so often. Even then, my anxiety was heightened because of it, so I wound up sleeping with my parents that night. Come 11.30 p.m. or so, I'm woken up by my dad carrying me into the bedroom closet, and when he sets me down, I notice that my brother and mom are also sitting there. I hadn't started processing sound, still half asleep, but once I did, all I heard was something similar to 100 people using jackhammers at full force on our roof. Turns out, it was a mix of the hail and rain, absolutely pummeling our roof. It went on for about a minute before we heard the tornado sirens start going off, and we could hear multiple ones near our house. We would later find out it was the only time in the history of our city that every single tornado siren had been activated at the same time during the same storm. So there's the sirens, the hail, the rain, the wind, the thunder, and the lightning, and it went on for a good 15 minutes. I was shaking so hard because of how terrified I was that I genuinely thought I was going to vomit and my parents were praying. They hadn't prayed in years and that's when I realized we were fucked. Eventually the storm ended and moved on and when we walked outside, the only thing you could see on anyone's lawn were insane amounts of baseball sized hail. Our car still has dents in it to this day. This was in 2013. A few days later, we found out that there were five to six tornadoes that had touched down during that storm, all scattered across the city. One of them had touched down about one to two miles away from my house, and if the storm had kept going, I'm pretty sure it would have ripped right through our neighborhood and our house. TL, DR, almost got taken out by a tornado when I was 13. It's not real, but the dream haunts me to this day. When I was much younger, I had a dream my mom took me to this creepy hotel. While she was at the desk, I ran up the very long staircase to the first floor. It was totally haunted. It was a dream, but I'll never forget the unwavering sensation of evil, like a weight in your stomach and the feeling of nausea. It was clearly abandoned, but I remember the feeling of eyes staring daggers in my back and the laughing and talking voices, but I can't remember what they were saying. I ran down the hallway running for my life like something was chasing me, and I found this hole in the wall to my right that led to a yellow slide. I went down it and I could see names and dates, and I saw my name and a date. I didn't know what the dates were for, but it's like I just knew they were death dates. To this day, I don't remember what my date was, but I remember December, so I assume I'll die sometime in a December. After I got off the slide, I went to my mom and the clerk at the desk gave me a creepy look. I don't remember much else beyond that, but that's the absolute creepiest thing to happen to me that at least stuck with me. Still waiting on the whole death thing. I was watching some shitty horror movie when I was 12. It was getting to the climax of the movie and right as the main character dramatically said, he's here, and the killer cut the lights, my power went out and my dog, who had been napping beside me, began to growl at something. I grabbed a flashlight and he was just fixated at nothing, but his hackles were raised, power goes back on and suddenly he snaps back to reality and went back to sleep. I was scared shitless. I only just recently discovered that one of my childhood memories was a lot more fucked up than I perceived it. I was four to five years old and my mother had taken me to some event in a shopping center. After the event, there was a crowd of running and screaming kids 
and the parents trying to leave a man grabbed my hand and started walking off with me. My mother came out of nowhere like a lioness and tore me away from the man. The man turned around and said, oh, sorry, my son is wearing the exact same outfit. That's where my memory ends recently. I brought it up over dinner, and my mother told me that after the man said that, she tried getting security, but when she turned back around, the man had jogged out of the entrance with no kids of his own in sight and left. Really creeped me out. 